Hello, everyone. Welcome to Horizon Weekly Insider number 147. Today, we're live on Discord and YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. And please be aware that this call is being recorded and will also be available for you to check out later in the Horizon broadcast. Also, please remember to ask your questions to the team on Mentee. I will share the link via chat very shortly. Today, let's go ahead and kick it off uh, with an update from our engineering department. I'd like to welcome Roberto. Thank you, uh, Erica. And uh, OK, this is Roberto. I will be providing today's update for the Weekly Insider. OK, so let's start with Zendu. And uh, specifically, we can talk about the non ceasing sidechain. OK, there was uh, an important accomplishment last week. We have completed the first uh, round of review. OK, created a pull request, uh, which contains all the core functionality. And uh, this is uh, has already been shared with the um, Noditing company. and. Uh, which will uh, uh, support us by auditing the code before it's released. So very important accomplishment, and uh, the audit is in progress. Meanwhile, uh, we started a second round, internal round of uh, review, okay, involving all the lead developers, and also this task is in progress. Uh, uh, in the view of uh, uh, providing some um, uh, comprehensive documentation, the project. We have started this initiative and right now we are working on uh, explaining how certificates are, handling, are rendered. Uh, okay, so this piece of documentation the software has been completed, waiting for review, and once it's done, will be uh, made publicly available to the community. Um, some other activity started next last week, uh, which um, are Related to the non sensible side chain, so we are extending the coverage of some tests and working on some enhancement and clean up of the code. They will not affect the core functionality, so they will be embedded in another pull request. Finally, in the view of uh, continuous improvement, we are checking some RPC command to find potential area for improvement, like additional checks or adding extra information for the new side chain and so on. <clears throat> Talking about Zendu, okay, for the not related to the non sizable side chain, we are investigating an issue on the Travis continuous integration pipeline. Sometimes a test randomly fails, and this call causes the execution to hang, okay, making the whole process fail. Uh, investigation is ongoing, and we expect to have an analysis ready by the end of this week. Uh, moreover, on the Zendu project, uh, we open a pull request including other uh, enhancements in the login system. Uh, there are some fix and uh, uh, some error message which have been fixed when some assertion fail. And also we have provided some nice features, so the ability to use some color string in the log which will improve uh, code readability. Okay. Moving on the SDK, uh, we are working on the deliverable that will be included in the next Blaze version, which is due in September. Uh, the most important update here is that we are working on Sparks, network layer of our uh, SDK, and uh, also for this code base, the um, Auditing activity has started. Some uh, findings have already been shared with us. Some have already been fixed. And uh, so a first version of this uh, module will be released and included in the SDK. On the other hand, so we are talking about the EVM sidechain. We are working on M2, also on the Milestone 2 activities in particular. We have... Uh, a new version released in our suite for uh, no regression testing, so our reg test network, which contains a bug fix and improvements, and also working on extending code coverage for the automated Python test suite. 
uh, added the business logic to manage forward transfer to sidechain address in the uh, forward transfer handling. And as well, we started researching around the uh, RPC method performance. Also, we are reviewing the design of the orphan transaction management. And last, but certainly not least, we are also working on a new protocol which will enable communication between sidechains. So basically, we are providing the ability to allow sidechain to sidechain transfers. Uh, the protocol is called Cross Sidechain Communication Protocol, and there have been uh, several design sessions, uh, but now we have started the formalization of the protocol, and this activity is in progress. Okay. These were all the main points for the weekly inside update for the engineering team. And uh, so back to you, Erika. Thank you. Now on to Victor for product and engineering updates. Hey, Erika. It's uh, John standing in for Victor uh, for the second week now. Um, I'll just speak really briefly about the EVM. Um, Roberto just kind of gave a bunch of the updates, but the focus since we completed the first milestone that was set out, uh, which was to get a working EVM sidechain on uh, reg test and testnet is now to start focusing more on some of the, the more nuanced pieces of how Ethereum works, like orphan transactions, as uh, Roberto mentioned, and gas management. But we're also starting to focus as a product team on how to create a sort of um, uh, really vibrant environment around the EVM. And so thinking about which kind of dApps need to be in place uh, the day that we launch on mainnet, what types of other uh, like fungible token, non-fungible token assets we need to exist in mainnet. So really focusing the efforts um, of our entire organization across product, business development, legal, et cetera, marketing, um, really on trying to build kind of a, a vibrant, like I said, ecosystem of the EVM. So that's really all the updates that I have this week. Much more to come uh, as we continue progressing on all of those fronts. Um, but with that, I will pass it to Angie with the rest of the updates from product engineering. Thanks. Thank you, John, and hi everyone. So, uh, quick update for um, for Token Mint. We have um, we have ready the testnet uh, dev uh, environments. So that means that we're going to start uh, the testing round sessions this week. Um, so it's going to be all about testing, testing, and then going through the any of the bug fix uh, cycles uh, needed. Um, so really excited about that, as as you know, and you can see there on the slides. Our next big milestone is the NFT uh, on Testnet. So all the teams are working together to uh, bring this to reality. And uh, there's a lot of interesting backend work as well, um, CI, CD uh, improvements and implementations, um, as well as some uh, uh, audits that Sphere, our desktop wallet, is going to go uh, um, through in the next couple of uh, days as well. So really excited about that and, and a lot of work, um, but we'll keep you posted with any more uh, relevant updates. Back to you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Uh, now I would like to welcome Vano for BD Updates. Thank you, Erica. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. So for today, because we had questions about this last week on Menti, I wanted to provide a short update regarding the partnerships and integrations for the upcoming EVM sidechain. Of course, we are like, preparing for the launch on the BD side and outreach has been started already. This includes bridges, DeFi ecosystem partners like Texas, lending and borrowing protocols, DAOs, voting systems, NFT ticketing solutions, and so on. And obviously, I will not spill any beans, but products from some of uh, the partners that have been announced as part of Zendo partnerships several months ago are also great value adds and great fit for our EVM chain. Um, initial conver conversations have been promising so far, and some partners are uh, happy to support us going forward. Hopefully, we will be able to share more soon with names as well. 
that's all from me. Back to you, Erica. Thank you, Vano. Now I'd like to welcome Rob for the leadership updates and Q&A session. Thank you, Erica. And OK, so on my end, guys, I want to say it's really about uh, trying to make the ZVM launch very successful. We have a lot of work ahead of us. And you heard snippets of it here. Um, there's a lot of technical work that still just needs to go on on the back end to make sure that the launch, the release goes successfully. Um, you have starting with testnet and then everything that has to happen from testnet to get this thing to mainnet. Uh, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we know we're going to need rather than just launching an EVM chain and saying, boom, missions, mission complete, and then having no one use it. We're doing a ton of work right now. Uh, and, and I'll say a ton of work, but really just starting. Uh, we really do need to ramp up our efforts across the board to make sure that the EVM is actually not just launched successfully, which is an undertaking unto itself, but having a whole separate dedicated project to making sure that we bring as many ecosystem partners into it as possible you know, as soon as it launches. And then from there, having a very aggressive roadmap to just adding more constantly, right? This has to be, uh, we're bootstrapping an ecosystem here from scratch, and we're going to have a lot of work to get the ecosystem rolling and getting some basic momentum and then gaining more momentum. And then ultimately it having momentum on its own so that it can just grow on its own versus us pushing so hard all the time. Um, so ultimately this project should not be about this team that you hear from every week doing everything. This project really has to be about us doing the right things, the smart things to lay the foundation so that there can be an ecosystem that organically grows around it, just like all of the other popular crypto ecosystems out there. Now, we are doing a lot to seed the ecosystem and to get it rolling. And you've got Horizon Labs is pushing really hard itself on the technology side. Then also um, right now starting to go out and cultivating potentially some interesting side chain use cases for people who want to launch their own chains. So we're going to continue pressing hard there. In fact, we're now putting together um, you know, like a dedicated pitch deck for um, what we're considering, say, like a competitive product to like Polygon's Edge product, but I, I think uh, way cooler or maybe more comprehensive with a Horizon flavor to it on um, you know, people that want to launch their own chains, right? This is the bread and butter for Zendu, and it's something that we have to push really hard for. The EVM is going to be an important chain. Token Mint itself was a really critical kind of proof of delivery system that gets some basic functionality to Horizon, but we need to kind of snowball it from here and have other people come in, launch their own chains, and really demonstrate the power of Zendu in particular. Uh, leveraging a lot of this Ethereum compatibility work that we're doing. Um, so going beyond that, we're also looking at some other you know, like business uh, activities that could um, you know, instigate some growth in our ecosystem. Things like maybe we'll have a Horizon Accelerator potentially. So we're talking to some uh, potential accelerator partners um, to get startups to come in and start up some devs and fund them and incubate them and just get some activity going on here naturally. Um, talking to some potential enterprise partners uh, and just really stepping up everything that you heard like from um, John and Vano talking about on the BD side or you know, people that were partners with us early on, or at least we signed some LIs to actually cultivating those relationships and seeing if we can get them launching within our EVM. Um, okay, beyond that, talking about ecosystem development, Zencon Zero, guys, I mean, I'll mention this. I've mentioned this every time for, I don't know, weeks or a month now on these weekly insiders. I'm going to keep mentioning it. Every week, you're going to hear me talking about ZenCon. Uh, we definitely want participation. Whether it, if you can't make it to Milan, totally understand. For those who, again, like who are listening to this insider, it's probably you're probably uh, you know exactly the type of person that we would like to see there because you're following the project, you're engaged. Um, so get more engaged, get more active, apply to attend the event. I know it's going to be small. It's our first one. It's a tough market. You know, there's there's a whole story behind that. But it's important for us to get the first one out there and get the first one out there coinciding roughly with, uh, you know, our testnet launch of the EVM. And, uh, you know, you'll see some partnerships and everything we'll showcase. It'll be a fun event. If you can't make it in person, we are going to stream as much as we can. So check it out on YouTube. Um, you know, stay tuned for marketing details on that. Uh, what else? Uh, marketing team's just been kicking butt and they've released an EVM milestone one demo video. Highly recommend checking it out. It's going to come out as a, a, a part of a series of videos around the EVM. And also they're completely revamping Horizon Academy. A whole bunch of new articles were published and they're actually revamping the tech backend as well. And I think it's going to be pretty cool from there. So there's going to be a lot rolling from that. And all of this really kind of comes together, you know, with Zencon Zero, comes together with the EVM launch. 
uh, and then it really set the project up for a strong 2023. All right, so I'll stop here and we can open up to any Q&A. Okay, great. Uh, so top three questions today, uh, starting with, can you please comment on the recent loss of active nodes? It looks like half of the node network is down. Wow, I did not know that, guys. And I'm just like, <laughs> let me see, do we have a chronic or someone else here who's maybe tracking that? Uh, actually, I don't see chronic on the call. I but, see Alan. Oh, I actually do see him. Yeah, Chronic or Alan, if one of you guys want to chime in there. Chronic or Alan, if not, we'll just take the action and uh, update you guys. Oh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. yes. So uh, we're working through an ongoing incident on the node tracking system. Uh, so mm, earlier today, uh, many of you might have noticed uh, the blockchain uh, has seen a huge amount of transaction volume, uh, which also has impacted the node tracking system. So uh, we're working through that today. and. Uh, are confident that we'll have uh, normal operations restored uh, in a few hours. Uh, I also saw another question that um, generally the number nodes, uh, number of nodes has decreased. And this is um, always the case when we see some fluctuations in Zen price. So uh, it has become less profitable to run nodes and uh, the market will always find an equilibrium where it is uh, profitable to run nodes, uh, and uh, we can expect some people to shut off nodes when the Zen price uh, falls. But uh, we've been through this uh, a couple of times already, and the numbers will always stabilize uh, at some point. Uh, I will keep you updated on the nodes channel on Discord uh, with the ongoing incident. Thank you, Chronic. Uh, second question today is, anyone developing Lattice? When will that be released? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. I, I love how people uh, continue to hold us accountable. And by the way, I love uh, hearing about uh, important events for the first time from the community, like the node, uh, nodes being knocked off or coming offline. Um, so yeah, with respect to Lattice, this is uh, you know uh, a project that right now we're kind of uh, fumbling, uh, not fumbling, <laughs> we're exploring some other options. Fum forget what I just said, fumbling, uh, wrong word to use, but we're exploring some other options, just given that the state of the, the cryptographic world in our industry has changed over the last two years from when we first envisioned the Lattice product. And we developed a proving system, uh, Darlin based on Marlin, uh, specifically for that product. Now, with all of this work going on in the ZK VM space, the opportunities have changed significantly and what was, potent was possible uh, or what we thought was possible two years ago or impossible two years ago is now possible given the state of technology. So we basically revectored the team to explore the current state of the art. This is why over the last uh, month plus, you've heard you know some of Alberto's updates talking about Blunky 2 and other proving systems that we've been evaluating. Because the reality is we think we can do something much better than Lattice. And it's one of these resource questions where like if Lattice were just something super simple and we can integrate and move on and you know it's kind of like an incremental step towards a, a bigger product like a ZKVM, great. We would just keep pressing there. It's a no-brainer. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, it, it is now that there are no no-brainer options in front of us. You know, each of these options takes us down a different path and they can both be interesting in, in their own right. But the one where the trace is the same path that the rest of the industry seems to be going, like if you guys have list been listening to Polygon and some of these other announcements of ZK EVMs uh, you know, being developed and potentially launching to testnet and so forth, uh, the industry has moved a lot. And the industry has moved a lot beyond what we were thinking with Lattice. So we're thinking, why not uh, kind of leapfrog what we were originally thinking ourselves versus continuing down that path that had an information set informing it that's two years old. Um, so that's where we stand now. Also, the pragmatic aspect was we pulled dev resources from Lattice specifically to work on the EVM because it's such an important aspect for our ecosystem that that was a no-brainer. So continuing work on an R&D project for, to get us to a provable blockchain, super cool. We're going to do it for sure. We have to do it. That's kind of one of these next-gen products that I think is going to help us stand out in the industry and also sell products to people one day. Um, but getting EVM to market was just hands down an order of magnitude more important in the short run, because this is something, a standard that the industry has already moved to, and there's already a ton of dev and business activity around. 
we need it in Horizon. So rather than launching our own kind of a unique technology that you know doesn't have a, a large user base to support it on day one, we decided pivot resources, build out the EVM, get that to market quickly, which we're doing. We've had some very rapid milestone deliveries there, and we're going to push that thing through testnet to mainnet. And then, you know, simultaneously, we have now our crypto R and D team looking at the state of the art of the provable, um, you know, like provable blockchain world, like zkVM, zkEVMs, uh, proving systems, state of the art there to figure out what is the best path for us now to augment what we were previously doing to Lattice. So when we pick up that work again, we can layer in the kind of best in class technology versus just continuing on, on previously what we've been doing. Anyway, long, long uh, winded answer and beware of long winded answers out there. Right. But I mean, this is just trying to share as much transparency with you guys as possible. Well, now that we're all terrified of Rob's weekly updates. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <Eric. laughs> Uh, so the third and final question today is, I saw something about NFTs on Token Mint. How is that going? Yes. Uh, so maybe, John, do you want to chime in there? Give us the latest. Yeah. Um, and Angie, please correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, but I believe I saw NFTs on uh, Token Mint testnet. And so uh, the development work, I believe, is coming to a close. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that we're planning on starting testing imminently. Um, I think there was a, well, probably I'm wrong, Angie, but that's what, where I think we're at. That's correct. Yes. So uh, like uh, we mentioned on our updates, we are preparing for the NFT release on Testnet that's scheduling the upcoming weeks. Uh, so very, very soon. And that means that we need to enable uh, our whole stack, uh, the Block Explorer, uh, backend, frontend, Cobalt also to support NFTs. And this means sending and receiving NFTs uh, in your Cobalt wallet. So expect that uh, really soon, but it's going great. And right now we're going through a lot of uh, testing round sessions because we every time we we have our release, we need to make sure that things work properly. So. We're still working on that and we'll keep you posted on any more updates. Super exciting stuff. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for today's Weekly Insider. I know on YouTube we did experience some issues with audio, so we'll be replacing the recording with uh, the version that was recorded. Uh, so I apologize for those who have been listening on YouTube, but we will see you guys again next Monday for the latest Horizon updates. Have an excellent week, everyone.